grace to you and peace and God our Creator and Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Well, today I'd like to talk with you about self-esteem, and especially of Christian's self-esteem. You guys ever think about that? Do you have a high self-esteem, would you say, or a low self-esteem? You know, it's an important subject for us because we all have a self-esteem. It's also huge because it's everywhere talked about in the world today. If you go to a talk show on TV or look at a magazine at the, you know, checkout aisle, it's always talked about <coughs> self-esteem, self-esteem, self-esteem. <laughs> so, it's a good thing for us to talk about our self-esteem, but from God's perspective. What's God tell us about our self-esteem? Is it important? Uh, what if you have a wrong self-esteem? Can you correct it? And what is it? What is a right self-esteem? Let's talk about that and see what God would teach us today by His Word, the Bible, so that we can be helped by it in the right way. So first off, let's just ask this. What is self-esteem? This is not difficult, very easy. Self-esteem is how you esteem yourself. Wasn't that amazing? Great first point. Ding, very good. Self-esteem is how you esteem yourself, how you view yourself, how you see yourself, how you evaluate yourself. Because you can actually have a relationship with yourself. You have a relationship with God, with other people, but you also have a relationship with you. And so self-esteem is that. We can have different kinds of self-esteem. Some people have a very high self-esteem. In other words, they think the world of themselves. Pat themselves on the back and say, I am great. I really love me. And I'm wonderful. I'm number one. Not to be political, but I just got to say, I read this quote from Trump this week. It seemed to fit the bill pretty well. In a tweet on July 11th, 2019, he wrote of himself, So great looking and smart. A true stable genius. <laughs> Would you say that's high or low? Sounds like a pretty high self-esteem. And you know what the result of that is? Is super confidence. I can take on anybody. I can do anything. And... Uh, there's also, on the other side, low self-esteem, which basically says, I'm nothing. I am dirt. I am <coughs> scum. I can't do anything. So when you have a low self-esteem and view yourself and evaluate yourself as super low, then you have no confidence. I can't do it. I can never win. I can't do it. So you have high self-esteem. You have low self-esteem. Some people are somewhere in the middle, although I usually think you're either high or low. Where do you think you are today? How would you evaluate yourself? How important is it, this whole topic of self-esteem? Well, again, if you have very high self-esteem, you're going to have very high confidence. I can do anything. Pat myself on the back. You feel good about yourself. But if you have a high view of yourself apart from God, and your relationship with Him, that's a delusion. Because the Bible says that God opposes the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. Also it says in Proverbs, pride goes before destruction, and an arrogant spirit before a fall. So if you have a high self-esteem that's not of God, you're in big trouble, or headed for big trouble. Also, low self-esteem has its ill effects. Because you really have no confidence. If you think you're a nobody and a nothing, you can't do anything, basically. You think you're a big zero, and you might even hate yourself. Beat yourself up incessantly with a stick. Does that describe some of you? You know, if you have a low self-esteem, that can be really problematic. Because you can't get away from you. You know, if you don't like your co-workers at work, you always got the weekend. <laughs> if you don't like your husband or wife, you can go to the bowling alley or a social event. 
If you don't like you, yourself, you can't ever get away from yourself. You're in really big trouble. It's not like, hey, I'm going to go on a vacation. See yourself later. I'm going to Acapulco. You'd be nuts. Because whoever goes wherever you go, you go with you. If you don't like you, you're living with someone continually who doesn't like you. And that's real, real trouble. It can have its real ill effects with, again, giving you no confidence or any joy in your life. So, you got the high self-esteem, you've got the low self-esteem. Some people in the middle, although I think most people are either high or low, but it's important to get this right. And how, uh, you know, to have a right view of yourself, a right self-esteem. So, therefore, let's consider what does God tell us about a right self-esteem so that you have a right view of yourself when you go out of here today or a right view and keep it well first God says when it comes to learning about self-esteem don't go along with the, what the world teaches you about self-esteem because they're clueless they are totally blind guides they talk about it all the time but they don't know what they're talking about you know, the world judges wrongly on everything. It can't evaluate, you know, a fly properly. How's it going to evaluate and tell you how to evaluate yourself? Women, I'll talk with you for just a second. According to the world, if you want to have a high self-esteem, you've got to look like the woman on the magazine. <laughs> look at her. Flawless. Nothing wrong with her. She's gorgeous. She's young. She's sexy. She's energetic. And if you don't look like her, you're going to have low self-esteem. You're not going to view yourself very well. A lot of women, i got to say, wrestle with that. They feel horrible about themselves <coughs> because they don't look like this goddess, as people would call it, on the magazine. But you know what? God says that is totally wrong. In the Bible, let's open up here, Proverbs 31. This is how you ought to evaluate a woman. Charm is deceitful. And beauty is vain, it's empty. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. That's how you ought to make an evaluation. So, the world's wrong with women and many other things. The world's wrong with men. If you want to have high self-esteem as a man, what do you got to have? Not only be good looking, but have a muscles and have a great money-making job. Because if you're a billionaire and have you know, lots of money, then you are highly esteemed by the world, and you can esteem yourself highly, too. God says that is also dead wrong. As you open up here in the Bible, Paul warns about those, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 12, against those who pride themselves on a man's position and not on his heart. So you're evaluating things totally wrong, God says. And the Lord sees not as a man sees. For the man looks on the outward appearance of things, but the Lord looks on the heart. So don't go with the world. They can't ev evaluate sandpaper. It's how they can evaluate you. Secondly, the world also highly esteems high self-esteem, doesn't it? All the world's problems they're going to tell you is because you have a low self-esteem. But if you just had high, then everything would be solved. Wrong again, O oh world. Think about Benjamin Spock. You remember him? Not Star Trek. Okay, not Tony. I'm not talking Star Trek. You know that. That guy that taught in the 1950s or so that you should never discipline your children because you might hurt their precious self-esteem. Uh, well, his wife divorced him. And I hate to say it, I'm not making fun here, but as an example, his grandson actually committed killed himself on Christmas 1983, jumping off the Children's Museum in Boston. You know, trying to, you know, protect a self-esteem self is not good. High self-esteem doesn't really work out that well. We got a generation who doesn't want to even have red ink used on their, you know, tests to mark something wrong, because it might hurt their precious self-esteem. And then you get a whole generation who feels entitled, like the world is to serve them, and they're not to serve the world. Who's got the biggest self-esteem in the world? The devil does. He thinks he's number one. 
doesn't he? And if you look at uh, people, the big people with the biggest self-esteem, they love themselves, but nobody can stand them. Can't stand hanging around some, someone like this who thinks that they're number one all the time and looks down their nose at you. If you have low self-esteem, Saturday Night Live would tell you, follow Stuart Smalley. Remember that guy? He had positive affirmations. And he would look into the mirror and say, because I'm good enough, and I'm smart enough, and I'm strong enough, gosh darn it, people like me. If you just say that enough, you'll get a high self-esteem. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Again, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble, says the scripture. And one of the chief sins, watch this, at the end of the world, according to the Bible, according to the Holy Spirit, this is in 2 Timothy 3, notice, Paul says, but understand this, Timothy, that in the last days there will come times of stress, for men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, etc. But notice the first thing he mentions about the end of the world, the worst thing that's going on in the world, is the loving of self. Highly exalting the self above all other things. Super high self-esteem. That's a sign of the end of the world. So do you want to find the highest self-esteem today, apart from God, good luck. Don't do it. Don't go that way. God says, if we can borrow a phrase from Jesus, let them alone. They're blind guides. If a blind man, blind man follows a blind man, both will fall into a pit. So, what's a right self-esteem according to the Bible? Let's take a look at a couple examples, because this really is in the Bible. Here's a guy, you tell me high or low self-esteem, okay? Here's your quiz. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon, and the king said, Is not this great Babylon, which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence for the glory of my majesty? <laughs> Goodness, this guy is a pain in the neck, isn't he? <laughs> What does he have? High or low? High, high. high self-esteem. Did God like his high self-esteem? No. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Immediately, words, while they were still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it spoke, spoken, the kingdom has departed from you, and you shall be driven from among <coughs> men, and you shall dwell among the beasts of the fields. High self-esteem means you're going down. Low, says the Bible. If it's a high self-esteem apart from God. But can you have too low self, too low of a self-esteem according to the Bible? Can you think of an example? I got a couple. Here, Exodus chapter 3. Okay? God says to Moses from the burning bush, Come, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring forth my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. Now, is that an order? That's an order. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt? Low self-esteem. Now, when God tells you to go, and he says you can do it, you better believe it, you can do it, because he's with you. Moses, his low self-esteem, who am I, is getting in the way of actually fulfilling God's command. And he bucks God five times until God eventually gets angry with him and says, you're going anyway. But a low self-esteem, which brings a low confidence in yourself, or in doing things, that is, for God, is also bad. Because the high self-esteem gets King Nebuchadnezzar kicked off his high perch. The low self-esteem doesn't get Moses off the seat to go get and done what God tells him to do. I see a low self-esteem in Gideon, too. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, The Lord's with you, you mighty man of valor. And Gideon answers, Pray, Lord, how can I deliver Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my family. It was getting in the way of his going and getting the job done. I want to ask you a question. Do you guys ever have too high of a self-esteem? 
Do you ever have too low of a self-esteem where God has told you to go and your low self-esteem as a Christian is not letting you go just like Moses and Gideon? You can have it too low as well. Both of these work off. Very off. So high self-esteem is not good apart from God. Low self-esteem. If it's too low in the wrong place, it's not good. When you say, I can't, I can't, I can't. So what is a right self-esteem? A right view of yourself. This is very, very important. Listen up to this next sentence. You ready for it? A right self-esteem is an esteem of yourself that agrees with God's evaluation of you. Does it make sense? A right view of yourself is a view that agrees with God's view of you. If Moses had the view of himself that God had of him, he would have gone. If Moses, if Gideon had the view of himself, when God said, you're a mighty man of valor, he'd said, oh, go, I'm a mighty man of valor. But he said, no, I'm not a mighty man of valor. He had a low self-esteem and got in the way. But a right self-esteem, a right evaluation is one that agrees with God. Because really, only his estimate of you really counts, doesn't it? I mean, others make evaluations of you all the time, but that doesn't count anything. Look at what Paul says. 1 Corinthians 4, But with me it's a very small thing that I should be judged by you, or by any human court. I'm not under you. And you can say that to other people. You might judge me, but I'm not under you. Jesus didn't worry about what other people thought about him. He just went on and did his job. If he worried about what other people thought about him, he wouldn't have gone anywhere because they hated him. Paul goes on to say, I'm not aware of anything against myself, but I'm not, not thereby acquitted. And he says, I do not even judge myself. Whoa, those are deep words, aren't they? Do you judge yourself? A lot of us do. I know you guys. I know me. We judge ourselves all the time. But Paul says, I don't even judge myself. He says, it's the Lord who judges me. And that's what's going to stand. So the only view of yourself that really counts is whose? God's view of you. And if you want a right view of yourself, you just got to agree with what God says of you, and then you've got a right self-esteem. So, therefore, if you go around saying, I'm great, when God says you're evil, you're wrong. You need to repent. But if you, at the same time, say, I, I'm unlovable, when God says, I love you, guess what? You're wrong again. You get it? You know, a lot of us fall into that later category. But a right self-esteem is what God wants for you. A right view of yourself where you agree with Him. So let's take a look. What does God say about you for a right self-esteem? Let's consider this first. You do actually have value. A lot of Christians go along to saying, I'm just mud, I'm scum, I'm dirt, there's nothing good in me. Not in your flesh, that's true. You were made of clay, I'll agree with you there, and mud. But God said to the mud, let us make man in our own image, he said to himself, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and the birds of the air, etc. And he breathed into man the breath of life. You're made in God's image, I think you have some value more than mud. David says, I praise you, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And Jesus says of you, even the hairs of your head are all numbered, and you are of more value than many sparrows. So, notice that word value. Say value. value. You actually do have value. If you are saying as a Christian, I am nothing but mud and dirt, and green scum on the top of a pond or something like that, on a zero, you're wrong. God's telling you you have value. You better agree with him if you want to write some view of self and not have him rebuke you. Now, secondly, according to my law, God says you're a sinner. And you're an enemy of God, you know, before you come to Christ, a rebel. And your natural state, before I come to you in Christ, these you are. Let's open up and read that. We've got to agree with him. Let's see it in Romans uh, chapter 3. You know the verse so well. You can all quote it. Romans 3, 22. 
There's no distinction. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. A few verses earlier, it says, None is righteous, no, not one. No one understands or seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they've gone wrong. No one does good, not even one. So, God wants you to agree with him on that. Is that hard for a lot of people? To say, I'm a sinner? For the world, it sure is. Jesus told a story. He says, two men went up into the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I'm not like other men, extortioners, and unjust adulterers, or even like this tax collector over here. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all I get. High or low? High esteem. High, high self-esteem. Then another man comes along, the tax collector, standing far off, wouldn't even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat upon his breast and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. High or low self-esteem? Low. Low. How low can you go? <laughs> Jesus says, that that high self-esteem was rejected by God. But the low self-esteem, saying he's a sinner, was accepted. And he went down to his house justified rather than the other. What do we learn here? A high self-esteem apart from a God is unacceptable. A low self-esteem is what you want. Oh, news flash to the world, who always says low self-esteem is bad. Actually, the first right thing you ever say about yourself is from a killed self-esteem. That you say, I am nothing. I am a sinner. I'm a rebel. I've done wrong. Because guess what? You're agreeing with God when you say that. Remember, the world is all about self. The devil's kingdom is kingdom of self, of exalting the self. But God says the first thing you've got to do is kill yourself and get a low self-esteem, and that will be accepted. And when you confess your sin, you're going to go down to your house and justify. That's beautiful. So that is number two. Number one, you have value, because God created you in His image. Number two, if you're a sinner, get a low self-esteem. Number three, let God rebuild your self-esteem in Himself. That's called the Gospel. Going back to Romans 3. You know the verse so well, but we've got to hear it. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are justified by His grace as a free gift. Through the redemption, which is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as an expiation or atoning sacrifice by His blood to be received by faith. So, what does, do with your, what does God do with your low-killed self-esteem? He raises you back up, doesn't He? But He raises you up in Him to say, Now watch this! I'm going to make you into somebody great in me, like Gideon, a valiant, mighty man of valor. I'm going to make you into somebody now. Anybody gone into the military? I know a number of you have. When you went in there, you thought you were a somebody, didn't you? Then you went to boot camp. What happened at that point? <laughs> you realize you're a nobody. You vile scum, 50 push-ups, and you get killed. But the purpose is to remake you into a new man with a new self-esteem full of honor and dignity. That's what God does with us. He first has got to kill your old self-esteem and then build you up to be somebody new in Him. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. I'm going to make a new self inside of you, God says, of great worth. And who are you then in Jesus Christ? Let's read that. Again, you guys are so good with the Bible, but let's hear it again. We've got to hear it. First, First Peter 2. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, that he may declare the wonderful, you may declare the wonderful deeds of him who calls you out of darkness into his marvelous night light. Who are you? Who is your new self-worth? Who is the new man? You're chosen by God. Chosen. Especially picked out of the world. Uh, you are a race, a people. Royal, which means you're kings. 
and queens, right? Conquering King Arthur? See. <laughs> yes. You're a holy nation set apart for God. You are God's own people. Now, when you look into the mirror, do you look and see, oh, that piece of mud, I can't stand myself, I don't want to go on a vacation with myself, even to some nice place? Or do you look in there and say, I am God's own possession, and he loves me. He justified me. I'm a valiant person of honor. Well, that's what God's making you in Jesus Christ. Once you were no people, but now you're God's people. Once you haven't received mercy, but now you've received mercy. Can you look into the mirror and say, I am one who has received mercy. I am justified. I am a king. I am a priest. I am chosen. I am loved. I am God's own child and son of light. You know, if you're saying those things as a Christian, you're just agreeing with what God has already said about you. And you ought to say these things. And with that, what's going to happen to your confidence? It's going to skyrocket. You know, a lot of Christians, this is where we super get into trouble, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Think of the three stages. Number one, you have value. Number two, you've got to admit you're a sinner and that you are mud. Number three, that you're a new creation. That's stage three. A lot of us get stuck in stage two. Mm -hmm. Thinking, you know... I was a somebody, now I'm a nobody, and it's really holy to just say I'm a nobody for the, for the rest of my life. Do you think when that tax collector went down from the temple, and Jesus says he was justified, God wanted that man to be miserable for, miserable for the rest of the day? Did he not want that man to get up and pluck up with a bright spirit and say, God's justified me, I'm happy now, I have a new life. He didn't want him to beat himself up the rest of his life. Moses got stuck on stage two. Some people say his first 40 years in Egypt, he thought he was a somebody. His second 40 years in the wilderness, he realized he was a nobody. His third 40 years, he realized what God could do with a somebody who realized he was a nobody. <laughs> but he got stuck at the beginning with stage two. I'm a nobody, God. I can't go. No confidence. His esteem was too low. Because when God says, you go, that means you go. He needed to have... Stage three, namely, I will make you as God to Pharaoh. I, God, will make you as God to Pharaoh. And our new identity, friends, is found in Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, by Jesus Christ, for Jesus Christ, to make you somebody great. I'm looking out on great people. I'm looking out on kings and priests according to God's holy word. So don't let the devil get in there. The devil always wants to stick us at stage two, which is holy at one point to say you're a sinner and that you're, you beat yourself up and beat your breast. But then he wants you to say you are mud and you'll forever be mud. You're a ship dead in the water. You can't go anywhere. Let me run the world. <laughs> if you just realize who you are in Jesus Christ, the devil is going to tremble in his boots. Because you're going to get up there and go and say, I can do these things. I can do these things. Because of who I am in Jesus Christ. The devil wants to keep your esteem low. God wants to lift it up. But only in Christ Jesus, his son. A view that agrees with God's declaration of you is the right one. Paul thought he was a somebody on his own. God humbled him, stage two, made him a nobody, he repented, but he didn't land and stay there forever. He went to stage three, saying, I am a new creature, and his boast was this, I can, I can, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. And that's God's will for you today. Agree with him. If you're too low in your view, repent. That's not right. If you're too high in your view, if you think you're great apart from God, repent. That's not right. But if you're in Christ, say, I who was a nobody and now a somebody, I can do all things. For you are the light of the world, Jesus says, a city set on a hill. You're the salt of the earth. And no longer do I call you servants, but I've called you friends. And Jesus says, it says, in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. Amen. Amen.